This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Um, all right, so it is August 14th, 6 p.m. and this is the Housing Authority meeting of Southampton, con to order. Thanks all for being here. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, open time for public comment. Um, as of right now, you're still a member of the public. Uh, so, um, Anne, anything to add? <laughs> Subtract, <laughs> deny. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Next, we're going to review and uh, approve the minutes. Um, do you have a chance to look at them, Dan? Great minutes. I would like to make a motion to approve them. <laughs> that means you didn't have the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second, I'll second that. Yeah, okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. <laughs> okay. I thought if I sent them later, closer to the media, at least, I wouldn't have to send them twice, you know? That's <laughs> that's very smart. It's uh, thank you. you don't need them ahead of time. Yes. Um, so next we have the officer elections. Um, poor Joy, last time we had officer elections, she wasn't there and we made her vice president. And now we get to do it again. <laughs> I thought we'd make her clerk this time. Oh, there you go. Ooh, that's really a gonna have to ask her to her face kind of situation. Her nomination's open? They are. Okay, I'd like to nominate Sarah Simmons for chair. Second. All right, I would accept no that nomination. Are nominations closed? I don't know. Is that how this works? You have to Sorry close them? It's okay. Any, any Let's close else? the nominations. I, I make a motion to close nominations. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All in favor. Thank Aye. You. Okay. Um, Thank you, Sierra. All you have to do is nominate. You don't have to vote. You just close the nominations? Well, we can vote, yeah. Okay. Since, since one, two, and three, I figured. Okay. Okay. Yes, vote. All in favor of Sierra being president, or whatever it's called? Chair. <laughs> you okay. can be president. I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm chair of the Aye. Housing Authority. Uh, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, well, I would like to, um, with apologies, nominate Janet for clerk again. <laughs> she's just the side. With understanding that maybe once Anne joins, she's going to like put her hand up and be like, can I be clerk yeah. mid-year? I, I know Anne a little bit better than you do, so I don't okay. think that's happening. Not the first year. No. Um, maybe Dan, who's always talking about how he doesn't have enough to do and not enough volunteer no, requirement. Okay. Any other nominations for clerk? Second. Second for Janet? No? Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, all in favor of Janet as clerk? Say aye. 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 Okay. Um, do we need a vice chair? Well, it's only if you're going to be have a, be gone for a while or yeah. you're missing a meeting or we can either cancel it or you just have a, a vice chair so there's backup in case you're missing for some reason. Well, um, do we have any nominations for vice chair? Enjoy <laughs> Piper for vice chair. I'll second that. Okay. Um, all in favor of Joy Piper as vice chair? Aye. Aye. Okay. Poor Joy. I mean, but I don't think she had to do anything last she year. She had literally so. didn't do a single thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't mean as vice chair, I meant. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She did not have to host any meetings or represent us uh, for any reason. It's always good to have a backup. Though. Yes. Um, okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Great election. Do we miss anything? <laughs> we need a Secretary of Defense? And? <laughs> um, okay. So, next 354 College Highway property updates. So, I have the update just, I sent it to you guys, but we finally got the wetland delineation back. Mm -hmm. And then I emailed that to Barry Searle, and I don't think he's gotten back to me yet, but I'm just going to check. So, there was an attachment on that. I apologize that I didn't see the attachment. Maybe, yes. Maybe there for is. some new people in the audience, it'd be good to overview what the <laughs> property is. Sure. Would you like to do that, Dan? So, was it two years ago we acquired a property that's on College Highway? What's the address? 354. 354. So, it's up near where the golf course is, right? Across the street, right. Across the street. Sort of um, diagonally. Yeah. So, up that, going up that hill, um, and we've been looking into getting affordable housing established there and helping to get a group say like Habitat for Humanity to maybe build there and so we're doing the groundwork of like the, the wetland delineation, looking into the septic system, all the supporting work that would allow them to give a pretty good bid 
uh, to perform that work. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. That's helpful. So, um, do, can I, do you know that Habitat's interested, or is it just us? Yes. Cool. I mean, I talked to them. They would have to go out to bid anyway, oh. but they mm -hmm. have, you know. They said they indicated basically preliminary interest if we like answer a bunch of these questions. And so now we've been setting out to answer these questions before we even put out the RFP because we don't want to risk putting it out and having no one respond and then being very sad. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to make it a really attractive RFP and we have a feeling that it's only Habitat who's going to bid on it. Okay. Um, so other people could, could they, but the wetlands they delineation not. come out good? Well, I'm sorry, I Janet, I don't really know how to interpret them. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I will read you the. I could read you What's the your sign, William. I should go back. I know. I know you said we got it. And like yes. There are some diagrams, but I'm trying to see if there's like an abstract. That would be real helpful. I know it from the uh, Clark Street one. I guess. Let me okay. just see if I. There's no see. areas of critical environmental concern. No oh, outstanding resource water. No priority habitat for endangered species. Easy. No vernal Easy. pools. No FEMA floodplain. No riverfront area. No bank. No bordered vegetarian. He said, um, "There's like something that seems like wetland that looks like." Somebody had, like, uh, I don't know, dumped, like, um, what is it called? Like, manure or something oh, there really? that had maybe, like, created its own little yeah. territory, but, like, mm -hmm. nothing connected to... That was my understanding. So it's like there's no identified wetlands. Yeah, yeah maybe <coughs> all those things sound good. Yes. Yep, it says no hydrologic connections entering exit this area. So, so that's, um, that's a report itself, yeah. Yes. So I forwarded that to Barry because the next step is having um, Barry Searle do a um, septic, septic design so that we can have a septic estimate so that we can give, because that was something that Habitat said they were concerned about. Isolated vegetated wetland area. So oh, there's a little something. So there's a the diagram? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing that they said it was like human transported material, like they okay, dumped some, the something in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we can Likely compost or manure. Um, buffer zone. So this is vegetative wetland in the front, it looks like. Yeah, and I, it was a little marshy there, like down toward the road. Mm -hmm. So facing south, so it's actually east. Yeah. Um, east of the property. Okay. And then there's a buffer zone in the back. Okay. What's a buffer zone? That's just, that's well, just, that's just close enough that it's... Can't, yeah, you okay. can't build it in there. So that means the wetland is somewhere off the property, but close enough? I'd be curious, I mean, Barry would be a good person to help us interpret this. Yeah. Because yeah, it's right in the middle of the lot. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that one. But they said... That. So we can, we can move it if we have to. And yeah, at least there's room it. to move it. So you can move that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah, you yeah. just have to replicate the same amount of space in a different area of the parcel. So Whoa, I didn't know that at all. Yes. That's cool. The problem with Clark Street is there was no room left to replicate it. Mm. The whole land, so same place. So you got it. That was the senior center. Property. Original property, yeah. yeah, that we looked at. You have to like pick out the newts and carry them down so the road. Exactly. Like, exactly. Okay. You and that's nice. plant the vegetative stuff and yeah. intermittent stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be good. I mean, I think Barry's like a also a, a, a kind of a strong wetlands person. So mm -hmm. oh, good. He's just the guy to have. Mm -hmm. Do you know like how many units or what type of units or? What? If we could get two, that would be awesome, like a duplex. Oh, okay. But I think we're looking nice. at doing yeah. one because Habitat kind of discouraged mm -hmm. us from doing more than one because oh. if, so, if it's like a condo and there's condo fees and they manage it, then there's, if one doesn't pay and the other one, you know, I, I guess oh, it gets it's kind of set against yeah, the working complex at, so in that small area for, yeah. that was their recommendation. Yeah, they said having two people, uh, yeah. If they have a duplex, they have to have a condo. It has to be a condo, basically. Right. Um, rather than being able to just sell it. It can't um, be just a duplex. That no, because it's not for rent, it's for sale. Oh, that's, that's right. Why. This they, is a they sell, sell for sale. Yep, 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 yep. <coughs> um, so that's, that's the reason why we're not expecting a whole lot of bids on this, because, uh, like, for example, Wayfinders just doesn't do projects with, like, mm -hmm. less than 10, 5, 10 units. Um, but Habitat does, because, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's small out here. You do what you can. Um, so, um, I will post these reports along with the minutes then from this meeting. Oh, great. That's Is that awesome. Good? Or we can also post them on our Southampton Housing Authority website. Sure. You Why not? You, you post that. Sure. For them. Yeah. So they're accessible uh -huh. to people. Yes. Even more important than on my town government is probably to have them added to our website. Um, and like it would be three bedrooms. 
Yes, yes. I think that's the, yes. It's, it's kind of a high ground water as well, so there's probably not, we probably have to maybe have an elevated septic, but that's why we'll find okay. out from Barry for sure. That's when you have the thing coming up. Yeah. The, Um, and th is there anything else in flux for that? It's just that, it's, so it's just the septic we're waiting. Oh, and um, the other thing I have to do is go back to the highway department website, which dropped off my radar. So let me just make, make my little to-do list. The OT <coughs> or something the OT for that. The OT to like get a curb official uh, curb, curb cut. Curb. Yeah, I, I, that's the only reason about sending the minutes earlier because then it triggers your mind before the day before. Yeah, if I read so. them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, DOT website and um, post uh, reports on. I mean, on if website. Barry's available to come to a meeting, that then we might want to invite him to our next meeting. So that's a possible. A, not a town road, College Highway. No, it's a state road. Okay. Yeah, it's a uh, route ten. Um, so. I sent this to Barry nine days ago. He hasn't answered me, so I'm gonna get back to him. I'm gonna give him another couple of days, and I'll nudge him again this weekend. He was citizen of the year, so he's probably still floating on the crowd clouds from Saturday. Oh, he so was! I Yay! I love how I keep knowing the citizens of the year. What a, I'm, I'm just you know friends in high places here, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> that or people only know to vote someone for a city citizen of the year if they like are somehow involved in government because they, otherwise they have no idea what they're doing so mm -hmm. um, it's more based on his sis historic society in the Clark Chapman house because mm. it's not related to town government it's kind of an outside of yeah. town government also. but he's now also on the historic well, commission he's and on the public safety building yeah. um, anything else on 3054 before we move it right along I've got my right, and does he do just septic yeah. design I know yeah Privately or for the town? Is he employed by the town to no, do that? Or privately. He we would okay. hire him okay. by the town okay. to do it. Okay. Yeah, but he's an independent contractor. Okay. Um, yes, but we don't need to go out to bid because it's only like $2,000 and it's a $10,000 threshold to have to do a competitive bid. So we just need to use best business practices, which is just fine. Okay. Um, okay. Next is the Housing Choice Best Practices Research Follow Up. Now, that I did do my homework on. Let me just find it. So, um, try to read it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did he speak at the meeting, the town meeting, when there was Ooh, some he, yeah. Barry, some discussion about? He may have. I don't. I don't remember off the top. Okay, it's very possible. What was the subject? Well, I I don't remember. I just something is clicking with septic mm. and somebody and the other piece of property. College Highway property? Yeah. But I don't Yeah. You would remember if you yeah. had it. So I'm just confusing yeah. things. I don't know. <clears throat> but he may have. Yeah. He probably spoke at the did you come to the public safety forum? Oh maybe that was Yeah, he, I think he spoke there. That's so. it. Thank you. Welcome. So for the housing choice best practices, this was where we went through that list of ideas and talked about where we were at with them and each of us took on um, a little backup research. So, um, Janet, do you have it in front of you right now? I'm in about I'm trying to find it too, so just bear with me for a second. I'm trying to, I like took my notes somewhere. I, don't I think I actually them. put it on uh, last minute. You did. Um, I think we'll wait to December, so let's... Here we go. Thanks for the first eight years. Each, oh yeah, House of Choice Best Practices, okay. Who won? There it is, there it is, okay. So, you can connect to a screen if you choose to. Right, that's right. But uh, I don't really have anything helpful here. So, um, <clears throat> number one. Well, first I just want to ask, Dan, did you have a chance to look into any of your things? No, I haven't had a chance to look into any of Okay, things. so I'm not going to put you on the spot for each every single one. I'm just going to ask you ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, land, okay, one of my assignments was land use board training. So it's number eight, and it's um, 
provide evidence of education and training for a majority of members on a land use board, planning board, board of appeals, select board, or city council. Which page? I'm sorry. Which what page are you? On? What's the number eight? Did you say? Eight. Yes. Okay, got it. Um, and so what we wanted to know was like, how are they defining a land use board? Mm -hmm. Could the MPIC being a land use board? Could the housing authority be the land use board? Um, and uh, I emailed them and I've not heard back, but I sent them a very clear email saying, here's what the MPIC does, could we all go? Um, and that was just relatively recently. So um, I will check back again if I, uh, let's see, it was 10 days ago. So I'll just make a note to check back again, just in mm -hmm. case, but. <coughs> and then there's, I don't think, I don't know how often the board, Zoning Board of Appeals meets. Yes. We really haven't had much, the, the, they're listed here as the land use board training. But. Yes, so they're an option, um, yeah. It's just something that, like the majority of members would have to go, so like, mm -hmm. uh, we just have to have people yeah. who have time to do okay. it, basically. Right. Um, the other th another thing which I was supposed to look up was um, number 12, participate in one of the following EOHLC housing programs. Housing Development Incentive Program um, have adopted an uh, Urban Center Housing Tax Increment Financing District, approved district improvement financing related to housing, or have adopted an urban renewal plan that could include a significant housing element. So um, I looked into these, the only one we could actually do, so most of them are based around urban, even the mm -hmm. ones that don't have urban in the name. Um, like housing development incentive program is an urban thing. Okay. But the district improvement financing is something we could do. Um, the way it works is uh, you basically bank on this development improving property value and income for the places around it. And then that income is like carefully segmented out of other taxes and is like paid back to people. So this would only work if it's like, it's not like we can just start doing it, right? It doesn't exist until we have a development to make. But if we were to have this um, incentive program as part of like doing the 40R and everything else, and we do actually get something built and we start getting like tax revenues and things start actually like improving property values and things like that, that is when we could implement that. Um, so it would go back to the surrounding properties or does it get? It goes to, the, I'm trying to remember. See, I had all my notes written down. I just like can't find okay, them. That's okay. But if you give me one more second to try to find it, um, what was it called? HCBP. Could you go back again and explain the definition? Yeah, I was kind of trying to capture something. I missed that. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying to find it. What did I do with it? Aha! I took. I, I emailed it to myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. Mass Development has created a new guide to help cities and towns in Mass utilize district improvement financing, a locally enacted tool that enables municipalities to identify and capture incremental tax revenues from new private investment in a specific area and direct them toward public improvement and economic development projects. Um, so I guess the money that comes out goes to us and we get to invest it in new stuff. So the DIF guide is available. Um, okay, blah, blah, blah. Can you send that to me so I can just add it to my minutes? Yes. Without trying to rewrite it all. Absolutely. Key facts about DIF. It can be used by any town or city. Catalyze the creation and implementation of a large complex project, such as revitalizing a downtown. Support a highly targeted single site project by a developer or expanding business promote a range of projects in between. It works by creating a virtuous cycle of public and private investment in a targeted area. New private investment on a property raises the assessed value, increasing the amount of tax revenue collected. Through DIF, the new tax revenues are captured and directed toward public projects that attract and sustain private investment, creating the virtuous cycle. Um, it's only tax revenue from the increase in assessed value that's captured. Anything from the original assessed value goes back to the general fund. Um, we created DIF locally through its local legislative process. Um, it can DIF funded projects can also include uh, roads, sewers, land acquisition, etc. Under the whole DIF guide, mm. um, any town wishing to utilize DIF must first designate a development district and a corresponding development program. That might be a 40R. Mm -hmm. The district and program must then be certified by the um, EACC. 
A development district may be as small as one parcel or might comprise up to 25% of a town's land. A district can be effective for a maximum of 30 years and it must have a unique development program which spells out the goals in the district and the means to achieve them. So um, the question is, can our improvements generate enough tax revenue to be worth it? Um, and it's supposed to be targeted toward blighted, distressed, or simply underutilized areas. That's what we're going to go yeah. with. Um, many of these sites contain abandoned or contaminated facilities, while others are characterized by dilapidated infrastructure and commercial operations that are simply not economically viable. I thought that's a little targeted, but thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so I'm going to forward this to Janet for the notes. I'll capture just the gist of it. I probably won't include the entire thing. Obviously. Um, it's a little bit messy, so it starts with the land use portrait. I will highlight the little okay. definition so it's yep. a little easier to find. <clears throat> okay, thanks for listening. So the land use, uh, and going, going back to it again. So we don't know about MPEC or, let's see, where is that? The one we spoke about before. Oh, so that was, I just, I emailed the guy, but he hasn't answered me oh, yet. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I believe those were the ones. Janet, you had one assignment. Yes. Did you check that out? I did. So, um, and I don't know what's happened to it because I did a little research on a Senate bill number 1930 that was an act granting property tax relief for seniors. And that would be a local decision, but it had to pass through the legislature before the end of July. So I haven't heard, I reached out to a few different state reps to support it as well as the Senate and to see if they would please support this kind of tax relief as we go and to look at, at um, you know, public safety and an increase from a senior center. How do we get tax relief so that people that want to stay here and have stayed here all their lives can still afford to stay here without the burden of the taxes. So mm -hmm. um, I can send this up out to everybody too. It's basically um, Upon acceptance of the section by a city or town, the Board of Assessors may grant real and personal property tax abatement up to 100% of the total tax assessed to wow. a resident who has attained the age of 75, subject to eligibility criteria to be established by the Board of Assessors. So wow. I also sent this to the board and said, you know, once it, it passes, we can have discuss it further. Mm -hmm. So it's passing at the state level, hopefully, and then we would have to enact it locally? Yeah, if it, if okay. it passes then, then we'd have to have a discussion with them and cool. determine what the eligibility criteria might be. But, you know, I know that um, in <coughs> understanding and talking to the town administrator, too, he was looking at some options that would help alleviate the tax burden was also on the, the older population in town with the new developments that might come. So. Um, and we do have the tax work off program that's available for seniors, so that that's already in effect. Um, whether it's at the Council on Aging or the library, um, it's kind of put together by the Board of Assessors, but managed at the outreach worker level for the Council on Aging. So that's our, that's in existence, and they up the the income as well because the, yeah. the poverty level is a, or the low income level is not as low as it used to be, and we yep. were very low. So. That's yeah. already been, that part was addressed and changed um, last year. Okay, mm -hmm. that's cool. Um, and that's something, you know, that our, uh, the woman who came to sit at our meeting from the um, senior center, is she an employee or she's a board member? Um, and she came to uh, chat with us and say, how can we work together? Well, that's the way we can work together. Oh, that was she Kate, yeah. yeah. So she is, <coughs> yeah, she's currently the outreach worker. Nice. In the senior center. And a town resident. Cool. So, Maybe yeah. she'll help us promote that. I'm sure she will. Um, okay, so that is all of our things. Um, and, oh, interesting. I also was just reading the um, Affordable Homes Act that just went out, um, and there was something about um, accessory dwellings allowed by right mm. statewide, which is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Would that eliminate? And us having to right yeah having it it's, it's I know it's over here and something <coughs> but we have it we've got that in our bylaw accessory dwellings we do but I don't know if we had more restrictive right, right. things on it than the state does or what oh with the state okay yeah I'm not yeah. really sure the we'll details. make things better yes um all right anything else on this topic before we move on 
Okay, mm we have till seven, so you can slow down. <laughs> Take a few breaths. I mean, me. God forbid we have like a fifteen-minute break between our meetings. <laughs> Next one's gonna be long. Would you like to join us for? I was planning on coming. Good. Um. So uh, next is 117 to 125 College Highway property updates. Um, so I did, as we suggested, reach out to Chris. Let me see. I may have forwarded it to you, but let me just check it out. So you do know we're meeting with Planning Board and the Select Board tonight. Right, that's right. Um, okay, so it was... I'm in all those. I know. Dan, Dan, which hat are you going to wear? <laughs> Who are you going to sit with, Dan? You guys are the best. <laughs> uh, I'm the safest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> One second. Because seriously, the select board should be involved in 40-hour decisions and help to push that through. Oh, yeah. For Even sure. Even more so than housing. Planning and select board should be key. We'll just plug, push them along. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't find it to read it, but basically my uh, to-do was to reach out to Chris and just say, hey, the housing authority has decided that we're interested and excited about this um, 117 to 125 College Highway property. Um, we, as you know, we see potential for um, housing options there. We're in conversation with wayfinders about like what exactly that might look like. Um, but and, um, you know, we'll keep you posted on that. But we'd love to be involved in any further planning and kept in the loop. And um, let us know if we can help. And Chris so, said, I mean, great, thanks. Good. So she yes. knows we voted unanimously to support that initiative. Yeah. Right. Is that okay? I don't know if I said voted unanimously. I just said. We are excited and interested. <laughs> is Wayfinders it's a federally funded affordable housing organization in the state? Mm. Yeah, they're yeah. regional. Um, they used to be called Half Housing. I guess you're not from Massachusetts, so that wouldn't ring a bell for you. Um, Connecticut, then. Yeah. yeah. She's, we're trying to correct that. Yeah, yeah. we're trying to fix that. Um, they are generally Western Mass focus, in particular Wayfinders is Springfield based and they do most of their focus on Western Mass. And, and I would also suggest that, and I don't know how to do this, but are the people that are in 128 College Highway happy with how that property is being managed by Wayfinders? How their mm. issues and concerns? Um, mm. Before we, you know, add more to the plate, I think it's, I happen to have a conversation today with someone who lives there, mm -hmm. and there are some concerns. Interesting. And that's one person out of 40. But um, I think it's somehow if we can encourage them to reach out to them and find out if they're happy with the, um, you know, the, the management there, the local yeah. management, the guy that services them, you know, mm -hmm. when there's an issue, uh, like getting my water faucet fixed, then sometimes yeah. that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. even though they think it did. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I just, you know, I mean, I feel really good about them, but I want to see it from like the end user perspective. So I'm That's just wondering thought, how yeah. we can kind of bring them together mm -hmm. there and let's talk about the satisfaction level. Yeah. And, you know, we've been talking about having a facilitated uh, like community input session about how to use the property. Yeah. Could this be part of that? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, and could you, as the Council on Aging um, boss lady... Uh, I'm no longer um, on the Council on Aging board. You're not? I'm not. How do you even live your life? What are you doing? <laughs> I I'm, on the, was, I'm on the Friends board. I, okay. I had, when we had a bylaw <laughs> that I helped implement a few years ago that after your second full term, you had to step away, okay. from the, not just from the board itself, Interesting. and let some fresh ideas come in. Um, well, uh, and I'm that's kicking all myself. Senior now. housing. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, well, sure. De yeah. Definitively, it's kind of just people with disabilities yeah. and senior housing at, okay. at the 128 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's veteran as well. I'd have to kind of do a little more digging this in. This just says elderly on here, but yeah. Mm. I hate that word. Yeah. Oh. You remember that? Or a 40, <laughs> unit, 40 unit senior housing. Yeah. Built okay. in 1989. But there are people oh, at with least one resident then. in the household must be 62 or have a disability. And mm -hmm. Or have a disability. Interesting. Okay. I guess you counted that elderly if you're disabled. That's interesting. Or have a disability to qualify. So there's nothing about. So that. I think it's either disability or 62. Mm -hmm. so. Um, what? Uh, yeah, it's one or the other, or. So, but Janet, I would still say that you're probably the closest to yeah, no, I'm be able to have those conversations. So yep. just keep keeping your head ground, and if you talk to any other people, like make an effort to ask them, and maybe tell Kate to ask people too, if she mm -hmm. is speaking mm -hmm. to them, that'd be great. Um, and, and then we'll just make sure who our wayfinders too, because I yeah. want them to hear some. That's true, although they might not get the honest response. I mean, maybe Well, I mean, they might be more honest without them in the room is how yeah saying? yeah that would make maybe although then again people tend to like to complain to their property <laughs> managers so i don't know um but uh i don't know maybe they're worried about getting like kicked out if they complain or something um yeah they're technically their security is yeah they so have i think basically one year leases that they keep renewing yeah so so maybe we collect some information if we see anything okay. concerning we concerning we bring we bring into wayfinders and say what's the deal yeah maybe we should develop something collectively to say you know or just even invite one of them to come to one of our meetings or something, or a couple of them to. But I mean, that's you know, I mean, it's everybody likes to complain too. But I mean, if there's real issues, yeah. I think we should get ahead of that before we expand that. And I think I can't remember Dan if you were part of this conversation when Wayfinders was here, but I believe they mentioned that they just got some funding to do some improvements to that. Mm -hmm. um, to the what is the number? 128 College Highway. 128. Um, Southampton Meadows. Southampton Meadows. They just got some funding to make some improvements to that. Now, I don't know if those were improvements that had just happened, improvements that are in the works. I don't know if the issues the person had are like things that are generally just like they didn't have the funding to fix them, but now they do, or if it was something more specific, like literally my faucet is running and you, like, I don't know if it was a larger scale issue or just like a single unit issue, but maybe that's good news. I also know that you know, I also work in a nonprofit, and I also know that like sometimes it's like hitting whack-a-moles trying to solve problems, mm -hmm. and by the time you've gotten around to solving the next one, someone's already like 20 days mad at you that you didn't respond. So, you know, I'm sure there's a story there, but um, I'm definitely interested in learning. Yeah, more. I mean, I just wanna, you know, we gotta. Yeah, we don't wanna yeah. just assume right. and uh, send people in if they're not doing a job. And it's all subsidized housing. Yes. So they mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. Meet. Income every yes. day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they were receiving funds for 128 College Highway? Yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what he said. I think they said we just got some funding to make some infrastructure improvements. Um, and I think what I think what I heard was that they hadn't actually done the things yet, they'd just gotten the funding, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, we could check about that too. Okay. Um, Okay, anything else on the 127, I mean 117, 125 property? One, oh, that's not one. <laughs> <laughs> so they're almost okay. right across the street from each other. Yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty very close. Closely, yeah. you know. Which is good because, you know, they, they have to be like in walking distance to those amenities, so it kind of makes sense, I guess. But they don't have to. They don't have to be, but they're not. But distance. most people who live in subsidized housing have cars. Mm. They're not. That's a something that we. That's a characteristic that we put on people who live in subsidized housing. That's not necessarily true. But some of yeah. them are very um, seriously disabled. Well, the, the seniors, yeah, yeah. and yes. the seniors that I mean, I dropped somebody off there today because she doesn't have a car. Right. So. Okay. But yeah, and I'm not saying everyone. No, yeah, I know, but just, yeah. Well, it's more, I mean, what I was referring to is getting state funding, like in first state funding for those kinds of programs. They're only really interested in funding things that are near town centers and walkable and have transportation. Yeah, which is too bad. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean around here it's so hard to find that. We don't even have transportation. No, and, you don't, you don't, and that's when, where I moved from, it was um, 830G, the towns can't um, use the usual reasons to not allow 
multifamily <laughs> subsidized housing. And everybody that, and this one structure was not, it was, it was in the, the quieter part of town. It was away from the center of town. And, and people, you know, it's just like, well, they don't, you know, how are they going to get to the store? And this, there's this, <laughs> there is a store right across the street. Mm -hmm. It's a high-end store, but you know what? That's for the people who live there to decide where they want to shop. Right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not for us to put them in a box that says, but this is what people use to um, not to, to complain to, and it, it also it, it has to be health and public safety. Those are the only two reasons that you can't allow it mm. under A thirty G, and none of this fits into that. Mm. So. Interesting. Wow. And, yeah. It, but and I also worked in a school that had a. Um, a neighborhood that was a subset is a house, sing, single and duplex housing. Everybody had at least one car. The only family I knew at that school that they and they actually had one car, but the mom would often have to walk, and she didn't live in that neighborhood. She lived in in the school neighborhood, but within walking distance. So it's not. It's just. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate because it limits a lot of our opportunities. Like when we were talking about looking at that property up on East Road, we were like, well, there's there's no transportation, so we, we can't get the funding. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's true that like a lot of the regulations that come from Boston don't mm -hmm. really take into account like the real lifestyle. Yeah, I was just going to say that. That's, it's all based on really Boston. Needs, yeah. 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 But I, I will say that I think our senator is working hard to keep Western Mass identified. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Identified and so, so is our Friends Wayfinders in the Western Mass Housing Coalition. They tried to get a lot, it worked really hard and advocated to get a lot of provisions in the um, the new bill. The new bill um, for rural, like reducing the, you know, minimum units and things like that and a lot of that stuff kind of got ignored by the uh, legislators. I think a couple of things went through. I haven't like dug through it exactly, but um, hmm. yeah. You'd think they, were, they had such an organized effort and they weren't really like asking that much, so, but I feel like they just got deprioritized, yeah. so it's a, really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, okay, anything else on that before we move on? Okay, so next is preparing for our discussion with the planning board. Did you guys see the agenda that Stephen sent? You know, I, think, I mean, I have the agenda from online. Is it the agenda that just says, uh, it says joint meeting? Open meeting. It says 40R overlay district presentation by Stephen Johnson and Ken Comia. Oh, they put one online. Okay. Yeah. Well, they have to because it's, it's kind of. Well, the last time I looked, on. it just said uh, <laughs> joint meeting to discuss 40R. Yeah. Okay. Well, mine doesn't have the other agenda, so. Um, All right. I printed this off this evening. Thank so. you. So um, basically. Oh, so awesome. Stephen and Ken are going to do a presentation? Yes, but like. I mean, supposedly, I don't know if that was posted after Stephen's long version, because um, supposedly there was all like... I, you know what, I saw you say thank you for your agenda, and I looked and I didn't see an agenda. Okay, so let me find that. Who's Ken? Ken Comey is with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. He okay. worked with okay. us our, on our housing production plan to update that. Can we do a DLTA grant. Mm -hmm. Let me throw a few more acronyms off. Um, so, what uh, what he put that is not on that was that we were starting with um, acknowledgments. Master Plan Housing Authority Planning, Fowl, Simmons, and Demond. I don't know what that means. Am I supposed to say thank you, mom? Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. um, well, if it's not on the agenda for the town, it shouldn't be on the agenda for today. Well, I'll let you and Stephen Duke it out about that. Maybe Paul can uh, get in the middle Paul of that too. That'll be fun. Um, what did you say? <laughs> He's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Then he has expectations and concerns for tonight. Um, Slideshow presentation, general questions, conversations with wayfinders. I'm just looking at things that have my name on it. Um, Scott's going to be there. The select board's going to be there. Everyone's going to be there. 
do you guys have any like things you want to make sure points we want make sure get across <coughs> concerns things we don't know but that word anything you want to bring up about that I just want to open the floor <laughs> I you know I guess I my biggest what I want to take away from this is that the planning board and the select board are totally behind this developing an overlay district here mm -hmm. and totally supportive because it's really will help push them like I said before but it's really a, their ball to carry forward so mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious about I mean this says you know overlay district presentation so I have no idea so I got a hand it to, to Stephen Johnson he put some freaking work in mm -hmm. and I appreciate that yep. because I just don't have time to do that so um, you know, I'm here to sort of see where we're at, see where they're at. Um, yes, would love to know that they're like moving it forward. I think this is like, I think this is a solid step in the right direction. The fact that I, think, I don't think Stephen's going to let it go. So I think the planning board and select board are going to do it because he's on both of them. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Dan is going to be our biggest uh, advocate. Oh, yeah. Um, and also not let it go. So I think the fact that we have representation mm -hmm. on both those words, people who like really care about a lot, I think it's gonna happen. I don't think we have to have that hard. I just wanna like be helpful. Do you know sure what so much money we have right now in CPC for? I do, because Dan just asked me and I sent it to him. Let's find that. Yeah, what like you special? Well, he just joined the CPC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just joined the CPC? Yeah. Yeah, I got volunteer. You got volunteer, yeah. yeah. Planning board? Uh, uh, the what? select board. Yeah. yeah. So I went on the website and I saw that it said uh, CPA member Dan LaValle. And I was like, Dan, um, the website says you're on the CPG now. Did you know that? And he was like, ah, let me check. I, think, I just, I just yes. they assigned me different ones. And I had to go look and find it in the back of my car. Yes. Um, okay, so right now in community housing, we have $558,637. And it's only going to go up this year. So, um, and the housing trust has not happened. So, you know, it's like we were thinking we're gonna put a lot of this money into the housing trust because then the housing trust can spend it on buying properties or what do they need to do. Um, but the housing trust has not been populated with trustees yet. So, I mean, I'm open to whatever else might come up that we wanna so make a request for. So last year we, got, we developed a housing trust and a bylaw and it got passed at town meeting. Of people. But not well, no, of a bylaw to establish a group of trustees. We yeah. don't have yes. any trustees. We don't have the right. people or the but fund that, yet. <laughs> but so, but they will manage the fund. Is yeah. that the, yes? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we and, have neither. Where will the money from the fund come from? This uh, community preservation balance here. Oh. I mean, some of that. Some of it. Some of it. People could donate. You know, we can also different dedicate sources. certain tax revenues. There's like there's a fun little. Um, infographic about the places you can get money from from for this um also we have an inclusionary zoning bylaw where if someone makes a development with at least 10 houses there has to be at least one affordable unit for 10 mm -hmm. and if they don't do that they have to pay it in lieu of fee that's and is it really high it's the cost of the affordable unit so it's not oh, really that, high well that's that's good though because yeah. sometimes they're not that yes well, it's never actually happened yet because people stop at nine. Stop at nine. But if that were to happen and they did pay the fee, that fee could be so paid into the housing it, trust. Well, you could change it to five, but yeah. We, we talked about that and we got a little bit stymied by the planning board who said, yeah. we're not doing substantial updates to the bylaws this year. We're doing just wording updates. And later, if we get more funding, we'll work on substantial updates to the bylaws. So. Yeah, so that kind of falls under the planning board because it's a zoning bylaw. Right. But mm -hmm. they won't do it unless we make them, so. Mm. <laughs> This is a lot of our conversations go like this. Janet goes, that's not our purview. And I go, it's not going to happen unless we make them do it. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I do a lot of managing up in my real job too. So I'm used to it. Um, holding people to task. Um, okay. So what, what was that? Okay. Anything else about 40R, our conversation coming up? Anything? So our desire is an overlay, mm -hmm. not necessarily a mixed use development. 40R is by nature mixed use. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how much property we would need to and how many affordable and how many, you know, I mean, so is mixed use meaning full value? I always think of Village Hill because Village Hill is like a mixed use, you know. So $800,000 condos and then, you know, smaller units for affordable. Or I guess I, 
the vision <coughs> yeah, that we have. I think we could, uh, <coughs> where's the state we're going to decide that? Hmm? Well, um, this uh, in a mixed use, like all the condos are the same, but they have it standalone houses. Have you been to Village Hill in Northampton? No. So it's. Oh, I don't know. Is that the one on the hill? Yeah. Oh, that's one of the first places we looked. Yeah. <laughs> so you see there's full price, and then there's condos, and yeah. the condos are all the same. Okay. Um, whether they're um, affordable or not. Right. And but the all other facilities around them don't have okay. to be the same. Okay. So, I mean, it's not like you're building, you know, 40 houses and four of them have to be right. affordable. In that case, it'd have to be all. They would have to be. So this is... I mean, I'm not exactly different because sure it's how not necessarily just one development. It could be multiple. Yeah, within the same yeah. area. It's a pretty big space. But when you say mixed use, you don't also mean that it includes retail. It, it does. I mean, oh, it could okay. be commercial. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, or something. I don't remember exactly what the like options and parameters are, but my understanding was that, that generally they mean like commercial market rate and affordable housing. And then we also are talking about like a public yeah. safety complex. So that's technically a mixed use. It wasn't on the list they suggested, but I think I'm hoping that today we're gonna, you know, maybe they may have some ideas about mm -hmm. what that might look like. But um, do we have any thoughts if someone were to? So another thing I did was I looked back at the housing production plan. In yeah, terms of as well. yes, in terms of like um, the question was, does it have any design preferences for affordable housing? Um, I just said no, really. Well, and also the master plan. They talked about not Ooh. tall buildings. Okay, you know they Do you talked have a about height restriction. Well, I go the zoning. I, I have to go check, but I feel like there is a number of story. Uh, I think there is for certain zones. Yeah, because I think yeah, when the feedback from the master plan implementation committee survey was that that people support it, but they don't want high rises. You know, uh -huh. so Southampton yeah. Meadows is like two and a half. Uh -huh. So the I basement three stories might be a half. Rise, yeah. You know, kind of half windows at the bottom, which flooded a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and then the two levels above it. But so. if you have a height restriction in the zoning, then that takes care of that. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think I that think would be a good question for yeah. the planning board. Yeah. Yeah. So it's consistent with the other housing options that are available in town, right? Um, so yeah, they didn't say anything about like um, much about the specifics, but it did say it should align with community priorities like environmental protection, open space preservation, and smart growth development principles. Um, it <coughs> said uh, identify areas appropriate for growth to allow Southampton to accommodate sensible development while maintaining its rural character. Um, let's see. Uh, it said, subsidize affordable units in future mixed use and or mixed income housing developments. Um, and it said, yeah, like action steps. Um, Planning Board and Housing Authority review sites for affordable housing, mixed income housing, mixed use housing, and assisted living housing. Um, and allow development on non-conforming lots through zoning, resulting in infill, conduct feasibility studies on priority parcels, et cetera. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of in alignment with our housing production plan, which is great. Um, okay. But Stephen's question was, does it have any specifics about how many units we're trying to build? And no, because we were like, literally anything, please. <laughs> like, we just want one to a million units, please. Um, do you all have any opinions on that number of units we might have a goal for in this property. I I just think that it much. has to have some three bedroom units because a lot of people say no because they don't want children bring more children in. But you're not going to bring that many children in with just a few three bedroom units, and you're going to help some family improve their educational resources. Mm-hmm. This is true. And people have gone back and forth between senior affordable housing or not non-restricted or 55 and over or... It, it should be... Open. Unrestricted, universal... What's that word? The, so that all the units are adaptable for Handicap people, but like universal design. Thank you. Yes. Universal mm -hmm. design. I always forget. I was yeah. forgetting the second I'll put that word. in there. Yeah, that yeah. is a good, that, great priority. Yeah, mm -hmm. that and 
Yeah, I agree that not restricting it by age, um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I think um, it will self-select to a lot of older adults around here, um, but then there will also be a couple of not older adults who also just need the housing based on income and I think that's yeah, great. Teachers. Teachers and people with kids, etc. Yeah. Um, so uh, we were hoping once we get a little clear on this we can talk to Wayfinders, they can maybe even make us a like proposal of some kind. I don't know if they'll do that for free though, so we'll look into that. So there are bylaws I, um, in the zoning bylaws. It says maximum permitted height for um, residential village is 45 feet. Hmm. Um, maximum permitted height stories is three. Okay. okay. So then nobody has to worry about it. Yes. Height three stories so, or I mean, somebody feet. could ask for a variance, but nobody has to approve it. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um. <clears throat> okay. So that's kind of what we know from our our community plans. Um, anything else on, on this? One agenda item that is not, I mean, I have one item that is anything <coughs> that needs to be addressed before next meeting. So until, well, until we get like a land use person, I mean, and ho find out how many acres are left yep. that are buildable, you know, then we can determine working with like a wayfinders, how many yeah. affordable units can we get in there? And right. yeah, you're right. A lot of them are bedroom I think and it depends on whether the septic passes through or not or whether we're on hmm. yeah we're talking about waiting a bit on this especially being sewer to be there yeah but if you're gonna have a few three bedroom and maybe a few less one bedroom that doesn't impact the septic septic right I'm not <laughs> the same number um so if I just say like off the top, what if we add 20 units? Is that too much or too little? Just throwing that number out there. I'm just trying to get a sense of scale. Well, I think there's, I think there's a, I'm trying to remember what I read. I thought there was some requirement with 40R that might be somewhere around 20 units. Okay, yeah. Um, I could see that. I don't remember either, but now that's starting to ring a bell. I'm just trying to get a sense in my mind of like, because I really don't know a whole lot about building and land use, so I'm just sort of following along here. Um, yeah, see, on eight units per acre for single family homes, 12 units per acre for townhouses, 20 units per acre for condominiums and apartments. 20 for condominiums? 20 units per acre. For condos, and I don't know with our. This is just. Would these be condos, or would they be? This is the overlay district. Um, well, apartments. Twenty units. Um, I think if it was Wayfinders, they're probably it's a company like that's probably going to be um, rentals. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think mm -hmm. that's yeah. really what people are looking for mm -hmm. and pushing for. Yeah. Okay, that's so helpful. Those are the densities. And that's for 40R specifically? It's 40R. Cities okay. and towns may establish special zoning overlay districts that allow density of eight units per acre that's for a single family. Okay, that is really helpful to no, know. I knew you. I looked this up the last time. 12 yes. units per acre for townhouses and 20 units per acre for condos and apartments. But if we have a height restriction, I don't know how you get 20 units per acre. And, mm -hmm. and are they affordable in perpetuity or is there a yeah, I think they're deed restricted I think yes I think and it is, is there a way to change that to in perpetuity so that you don't lose those numbers as affordable housing in the community do you don't you have like in something where you're just everybody's supposed to have 10 percent but nobody not very many people yeah like is I thought there were all deed restrictions are always in perpetuity is that not the case no 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 um, restrictions are so many years. Interesting. Okay. 20, and then you, you know, you end up with fewer affordable units down at the, the end. Yeah, which is yeah, right. Which is really what you don't want. You want them to be affordable in the future for mm -hmm. whoever needs to live there. Now I'm remembering someone was talking about. Um, I think they were talking about, oh, things the housing trust can do or, or something like that. But it was like, yeah, something that's about to come out of uh, restriction. Um, someone like bought it with private funds or um, 
maybe it was a 40 yard thing anyway i now remember that it's totally so thing. um but i don't remember how many years it is um okay 656 uh so let's move along um the other piece of business that cannot wait till next meeting is we got a request from judy who said i'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint in bowman second uh, so I don't even need to tell the story. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, Judy, Judy Zidonis is the assistant to the um, Scott. Uh, assistant. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, she said. I think we all got the email, so that's why I was. Coming. Okay. Well, Anne did get the email. So well, Anne did. <laughs> we got your application for, okay. and she. They that's said, good. should we put this on the select board's agenda? And I said, let's vote on this later. So, okay. all in favor? Wait, did you? Did we get a first and a second? Yeah. We did. All right. Um, all in favor of uh, asking the select board for one year appointment <laughs> for Ann Bowman. Aye. Aye. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. So this will be till May until there's an election. Okay. 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 So okay. just to explain that. Yeah. You know. That's fine. Um, okay. So uh, schedule the next meeting. Yeah, I to figure out just what I can do. And I actually, interestingly, got an outreach from the um, people that are supposed to do the state appointing. And they're like, hey, oh, I'm an intern, and I'm just wondering if <laughs> name you've never heard of is still your state appointed person. And I was like, first of all, no. Second of all, who is it? Uh, someone. Not, I mean, never mind. We'll I can look at it in my other email. But um, they basically, I was like, first of all, no, that person hasn't been there for five years. Second of all, I give them the dates that you and I each sent our letter and who they sent them to. And I said, we've never heard back. So so happy you're looking into this. Let me know if there's a different person I can talk to. The intern's like, oh, no. <laughs> no exactly. Um, OK, so it's a Wednesday. It's the second Wednesday. Is it? Yes. So it would be October. I think our meeting's at 7.05. Oh, is it really? It's what I saw in the chat. Okay, great. Well, it's going to take a while to get there anyway. Um, 5 Even though it's a 7 in the title. So we could meet on Wednesday the 11th? Sure. At? September 11th? Mm -hmm. Anyone have uh, plans that day? No. Yeah. <laughs> Besides morning? Um, September 11th. I, I, I'm all day we take care of my grandchildren. So. Okay. Um, do you, what time do you get out? Or are you done? What Five. Time? Five. Okay. It's camped in. Is six good for you? Or yes. It's like seven. Five. Okay. So six on the 11th? Perfect. Um, um, look at the calendar. Okay. Let me look at my other calendar too. Oh, we've got to check both calendars. Real quick. I'll get it on here. It's faster. Okay. Um, and we can meet virtually again. I just had us yeah. be in person. Oh, that makes sense. Because because of the you other didn't thing. have to drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gotta go now. We're on okay. Zoom in the car. Everybody's Zooming. Yeah. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That would be at so we're 6.59. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.